It had to be more than coincidence that four tech giants, Apple and Facebook and Spotify and Google's YouTube, banned Alex Jones on the same day. They said he had violated their rules against hate speech, false information, or conspiracy theories, with Twitter, the only major social media outlet, refusing to go along. And the InfoWars founder is denouncing the move. I am being unpersoned, like out of 1984. I am literally being disappeared. We have a high-tech lynch mob invo involved in really cyber warfare and, and stalking warfare, trying to have him removed off the web. We're back with the panel. Guy Benson, uh, what do you make of these four tech giants acting on the same day against Alex Jones? And do you think they bow to outside pressure? Well, I think first, Alex Jones is one of the most vile actors in the media landscape in America. What he's put the Sandy Hook families through is skin crawling. By to me. claiming, at least for a time, that it was a hoax, that there was no Newtown right. school. Child massacre. actors, yeah. and it wasn't even yeah. real. It didn't happen. He said something similar shit. about the Parkland High School students, the survivors are child right. actors. So he's, actors. he's an appalling person. What worries me about what we're seeing on this subject from big tech is. If the plan is to go after the truly extreme fringe, who gets to decide what the definition of fringe is? And will we get mission creep? And will the fringe start moving closer and closer to the mainstream based on ideological differences? And are we going to apply those rules evenly and fairly? For example, if Alex Jones is out as a hateful bigot and conspiracy theorist, should Louis Farrakhan also be out as the same thing? Who gets to make these choices? And should we as conservatives, in my case, trust a very liberal area like Silicon Valley oh. and those executives to make these choices fairly. Susan, this is a classic free speech debate because in the past, particularly Facebook, Twitter, and Apple have said, you know, uh, it's not our responsibility. It's a platform where anybody gets to use it. And now that's become untenable because of Russian disinformation and lies. Uh, and so now they are admitting that they have responsibility to police their content. And the question becomes, how do they do it? Well, they're private companies, too. They can allow whoever they want and kick out whoever right. they There's want. There's no First There's no Amendment question. issue here. They're publicly traded, but they're private sector companies. So how do you decide? And I think but that's part of the debate right now. As, as Guy was saying, there is mission creep. I think there is already evidence of that. If you look at people who've been shadow banned from Twitter or who have had YouTube videos taken down for seemingly inoffensive content, mm -hmm. but maybe it was conservative leaning, there's already a threat of that happening. So. How do you define what should be kicked off of a social platform? Is it uh, inciting violence? What uh, I think uh, David French had a good New York Times column today or yesterday about why not use the libel standards? Can stick to the First Amendment and stay with current libel mm -hmm. standards. You, there needs to be a real conversation because otherwise it's, it is going to be basically probably banning more conservative thought. And that's not, that's not right, and that's not free speech. Right, and one exception, as I mentioned at the top, is Twitter's founder and CEO, Jack Dorsey. Uh, he defended the position of allowing Alex Jones to remain on that platform in a radio interview with Sean Hannity. We do not shadow ban according to political ideology or viewpoint or content, period. Uh, we, every, every model that we have on the network uh, is really looking at the behaviors on the network. Mm -hmm. So he is taking a very different position, right. uh, even though Twitter has since admitted that, yes, some of the things that he's tweeted have been taken down did violate Twitter's own standards. Right. But, I mean, I think that he's, he's, Twitter is more sticking to the, the line that uh, they are maintaining Alex Jones because he's not, by and large, violating their terms. One of the interesting things about YouTube uh, in particular was that uh, apparently Alex Jones was under some kind of a 90-day posting ban. And because he violated that specific thing, and I think there was a 60-day ban for one or the other, maybe it was Facebook, um, they, those outlets pointed to that specific violation as one of the reasons why they, that Alex Jones violated their terms and conditions. The hate speech thing is really where it gets, uh, I think, hairy. I think that there's not an issue here when it comes to First Amendment because, as we discussed, um, you know, these are private entities. No different than, frankly, the NFL um, and, and some of the debate about what is First Amendment there well, we'll with Neely. We'll leave, leave that can be. I just, can Please. I just say, I think that you're right, definitely, that these private entities have the right to right. ban and censor whomever they want. That doesn't make it the right thing to do. I agree and, with you guys. And secondly, this is a tough question for all of us to wrestle with. To what extent 
do platforms like Facebook and Twitter today represent the modern public square? And is that well, different Anthony, than Anthony other Kennedy private companies? Kennedy actually, Justice Kennedy actually issued an opinion surrounding that, basically saying that social media is, you know, the, the global public square at this point. So, well, I mean, there's no question that they, it's not a monopoly, but they are crucially important to public discourse. So let me put up a, a tweet from Twitter's Jack. Dorsey, one of several, he says accounts like Jones, he acknowledges, can often sensationalize issues and spread unsubstantiated rumors, so it's critical journalists document, validate, and refute such information directly so people can form their own opinions. Susan, a lot of journalists went wild over this, saying, hey, buddy, it's not our job to clean up your platform. You have to be responsible for well, what you allow. That is what Twitter has become. It has become a forum, really. If you look at, you know, journalists use Twitter all day long to argue and post news it's it really kind of moved to the social platform so yeah. i don't think that's a that's that's i think that's a reasonable thing for him to call on on reporters to, or journalists to refute some of this stuff. Otherwise, you're going to have, who is going to make these decisions? Well, yes, Why not leave it all out there and let everybody have argue? their own it. responsibility, right. but I don't think it substitutes for the judgment of, the, of these executives. And just uh, briefly, Capri, um, you could argue this storm publicity has helped Alex Jones. Apple made a show of booting him, but still carries his app, which surged right. to number three. I was just gonna, I was and it's the top that. trending app on Google Play. Right. And, and you know, uh, Zuckerberg has actually uh, made some statements about this, essentially saying that he thinks that Alex Jones may have wanted to get banned in order to continue uh. to raise his profile um, and obviously that's happening and he's getting a lot of viewers through Periscope which is part of Twitter's platform. The man is not a conservative. He is a vile human being in my opinion. He's right. a vile conspiracy theorist. Well there's been a lot of conspiracy theories including that Pizzagate conspiracy that exactly. he had to apologize for spreading. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight. I'm Tammy Bruce, filling in for Tucker this evening. It's great to be back with you. You know, it's like the early 2000s again. Rosie O'Donnell has been having another meltdown over Donald Trump. This guy is in no means mentally stable enough to run this country, and he should be impeached, and every congressman who hasn't filed those articles should lose their job. Oh, well, there you go. We have more of that just ahead, plus Black Lives Matter crashing a police officer's own wedding. Parents, I just wonder if you started planning your wedding before you filmed stuff on Clark or after, and how you've been how you've been sleeping since March 18th. And I know this is supposed to be the happiest day of your life. People not have that on the get out of here ever. But first, tech companies are taking the lead in suppressing any voices that dissent against the left. In the past few days, Apple, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and other companies have all banned Alex Jones from using their platforms. Also, Twitter purged various libertarian accounts. Instagram temporarily banned Tommy Robinson. Facebook took down a GOP candidate's ads for allegedly being offensive. And a Democratic Senator Chris Murphy says mass censorship is needed to ensure, quote, the survival of the democracy, end quote. I guess he doesn't realize the, the irony there. Who's next? Uh, well, on MSNBC, some say Twitter should ban the president. Trump has insulted someone via Twitter at least 487 times. Is there a point yeah. in which Twitter says this is a violation of our ethics, we're going to shut you down? I think there probably is a Rubicon he could cross, but he hasn't crossed it yet, uh, for, for Twitter at least. Well, let's have this conversation now. Nigel Farage once led the U.K. Independent Party and spearheaded the Brexit campaign. He joins us now. Nigel, thanks for coming up with us. Thank you. Uh, look, uh, obviously, here's, here's the issue. This is nothing new, right? We've seen this happening for quite some time. Even Diamond and Silk is a very good example on Facebook. But you've got an uh, op-ed in USA Today, and you've got a very interesting idea about perhaps how we can start to approach uh, this kind of banning and this assault on conservative ideas on social media. What, what do you have to say? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, Mark Zuckerberg has always claimed that Facebook was a platform for all ideas. Fine. You know, in doing that, he says, I'm not a publisher. I'm just a means of people putting out their messages. You know, whether you, whatever you think of Alex Jones and InfoWars, and, you, you know, you may say, hey, this guy's a bit out there. The point is, he's got a big following. He has an opinion. And if you believe in free speech, if you believe in your First Amendment rights, people should be allowed to do this. I would say that by banning Jones, by shadow banning many others, Facebook and others are now effectively becoming a publisher. And that means, because they're taking editorial decisions, they should be open to being sued as other media organizations are. 
Now, I would argue, uh, because, we, look, we're all looking at try to how to find some balance here, because we do clearly see it's unfair. We, we see ranging from congressmen being shadow banned to, to celebrities who have the wrong opinions, might be somewhat conservative, that we're trying to find a, a framework, especially with uh, uh, mainstream media being 85 percent liberal. And we see yeah. that push. But we're the content in social media, which gives us an edge. But let me suggest, though, that some of the argument by Twitter and what they're doing is they're saying that these comments violate their standards. And if we open it up to, let's say, lawsuits for a libel, wouldn't it make it even more difficult to have speech? Wouldn't more people be banned? Wouldn't there be more people suspended? No, because if you're a platform for all ideas, you are not a publisher. That is the point. And what Zuckerberg and the other tech giants are trying to do is they're now trying to have it both ways. On the one hand, they claim, you know, we're not publishers, we're not open to libel because we let everybody uh, give their opinion. But on the other, they now, in a very sinister way, are starting to ban and shadow ban people. I mean, take, for example, on Facebook, PragerU, an right. organization an organization that I've spoken for. I've been to their events. Uh, you know, they these are work. not... They do great work. Uh, they do amazing work. Yeah. I mean, their videos have been seen by tens of millions of people. They now, on Facebook, have 88 of their videos that are now very much put to the back of the list. They're very hard to access, including ones on Christianity, for goodness sake. Yeah. So, so we've gone way beyond the bounds. What is needed now is a Bill of Rights for people using the internet. You know, let's, let's give people access, let's give people rights, and if we can't get that, let's make sure we now redefine Facebook, YouTube and Twitter as publishers who are liable, as are Fox News or the Wall Street Journal or anybody else, to the content they put out. Yeah, look, I, again, we've got to find a way to push back. And one of the strengths we have uh, here uh, is that we are the content, right? Uh, and there's a sense also that we're, we're willing to put up with anything because our lives now, Nigel, are so intertwined, right? With Twitter, with Facebook, je social media in general. Yeah. It is the new modern way to communicate. Uh, and, and my concern, of course, is, is that uh, if they, we don't want them to go away, and yet, ironically, we, they're, they're private public companies. They're not a government. They, they can do as they please. But I think the power is, as an example, this conversation, our being able to have a, a, a point of view and make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on, because since we are the content, we can, uh, we can at least push back and make a difference there. Nigel, uh, wow. uh, thank you so much for, for joining me tonight. Thank I appreciate you. it. There are more ugly echoes from the New York Times' decision to hire Sarah Jung, the young Asian-American writer who uh, the paper stood by, even though she had a long history of absolutely racist tweets against white men, white people, hashtag cancel white people. She called white men dogs and BS and all kinds of curse words. Uh, and the paper had argued, and Sarah Jung had argued, that uh, she would made a mistake, she regretted it, that she, as a young Asian American, had been the target of a lot of online hate and that she had slipped into the practice of adopting uh, those uh, despicable techniques by, by imitating uh, those who were going after him. And there were her, and there were a couple of examples of uh, how she had been abused. And I had a little bit of sympathy for that. I, I mean, I hated these tweets. I thought they were despicable. But um, I could see... Uh, I didn't like the fact that an online mob was after her because we've seen this so often where either the left or the right, depending on the target, tries to get someone fired. But man, my view has evolved on this now as more and more tweets have been unearthed from the newest New York Times editorial writer. First, she went after uh, law enforcement with F the police and cops are a-holes. So now this is no longer just sort of singling out white people and what she originally claimed was satire, but certainly looked a lot more serious than that. Now, you know, is, is, is the New York Times uh, comfortable with, uh, you know, F the police? Really? Seriously? And a whole new batch, and this was pointed out by the Washington Times about the president of the United States, can't be shocked about that. Trump is Hitler, says Sarah Jung. Trump equals Hitler. Trump is basically Hitler. You noticing a theme here? Was Hitler as rapey as Donald Trump? I was equating Trump to Hitler before it was cool. Now, can you imagine the Times hiring anybody uh, who used that kind of language? I mean, comparing the President of the United States to one of history's greatest mass murderers. 
um, against a Democrat, a liberal. I mean, would the Times be offering these justifications that that person would be gone before you know it, before you could blink? And this is where I think there's a bit of a double standard that, that comes in. Now, I understand she didn't do these things for the New York Times, and the paper said it's discussed her social media history with her, but it does, it does sort of suggest uh, that there is a different standard for um, an ultra-liberal spewing hate, ugliness, and bigotry in the direction of white people, cops, Donald Trump, than there might be if it was the mirror image. And all this is unfolding um, after Facebook and YouTube and Apple and Spotify banned Alex Jones from uh, their very popular platform. Alex Jones, the founder of InfoWars. And I've gotten a lot of heat. I wrote about this yesterday from conservatives saying, you know, this is a violation of the First Amendment and so forth. Well, actually, it's not because these are private companies. And they can do whatever they want in terms of who they allow on their platforms. They've been under enormous pressure uh, to police the content on their platforms. And it is true that there are absolute documented instances, particularly Facebook and Twitter, going after conservatives, libertarians, banning them, shadow banning them, suspending them. Facebook and Twitter have acknowledged this. They say they're trying uh, to do better. But I think it would be a mistake to say, you know, that Alex Jones is, is being uh, kicked off uh, because his views are t too conservative. It's because he peddles conspiracy theories like the Newtown, Connecticut school massacre never happened. There's litigation on that. Like the Pizzagate conspiracy, you know, child sex trafficking ring tied to Democrats here at a pizza place in Washington um, never happened. He ended up apologizing for that one. That's the reason he was banned. We can debate whether or not that was a good idea, uh, but he still, you know, he can still have his online show and reach lots of people. Obviously, his reach will be curtailed if he can't get on these popular platforms. But when you compare that to the New York Times, uh, which did unhire somebody just a few months ago, Quinn Norton, whose history of tweets went after gays, it just makes you wonder. Uh, I don't like the online mob mentality, but I sure don't like the ugliness and bigotry that some people feel comfortable spewing, and then they get rewarded with prestigious jobs. There is a ton of reaction to what's happening online this week, this debate over free speech, what's valid, what's not, and who ultimately decides. Twitter says it will not suspend Alex Jones or his website InfoWars, as many other tech companies have done this week. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey defending that decision with Sean Hannity on radio yesterday afternoon. We do not shadow ban according to political ideology or viewpoint or content, period. We rely on a bunch of signals. We'll certainly miss things. And mm. we're, we're certainly going to make mistakes along the way. Well, Fox News media analyst Howard Kurtz host of Media Buzz. He's got a Howie, you got a story for this on this rather for years to come. I mean, how we yep. sort through it, how we figure it out, how we justify what is appropriate and what is not. What do you think? Well, first of all, it takes a bit of courage for Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, uh, to come out and say he's not going to ban Alex Jones when you have these other tech giants, Facebook, Apple, uh, Google, and others, uh, kicking him off on the grounds of what they call hate speech or spreading conspiracy theories. And Dorsey is getting absolutely hammered on Twitter over his decision. Now, he says he's just following the service's rules, but what our legions of critics are saying this morning, Bill, is what good are your rules if they don't exclude somebody who spreads false conspiracy theories such as that the Sandy Hook school massacre in Connecticut never happened. Okay, so he fired off a number of tweets explaining his decision yesterday. I'll just I'll, I'll read some of them and get you to react. Here's one. Accounts like Jones's can often sensationalize issues and spread unsubstantiated rumors. So it's critical journalists document, validate, and refute such information directly so people can form their own opinions. This is what serves the public conversation best. That seems to be an argument over free speech. Yeah, that we can fight free speech with more free speech, but it really has gotten under the skin of journalists who are saying to Jack Dorsey on Twitter, uh-uh, it's not our job to clean up your platform, which has over the years developed so into such an ugly cesspool at times, as Twitter also has a lot of good things. I'm on it all the time. And so essentially with that tweet, Jack Dorsey is sidestepping uh, to a large degree his responsibility to police the content, saying, well, we'll put almost all of it out there except maybe death threats or something, and other people can fight it. And so he's kind of passing the baton to journalists 
to go after people. So like here's a, here's your job and the job of others is to figure out what the policy is and how it affects people, whether it's justified or not. Dorsey defends it this way. Here's another tweet. Truth is, we've been terrible at explaining our decisions in the past. We're fixing that. We're going to hold Jones to the same standard we hold to every account, uh, not taking one-off actions to make us feel good in the short term and adding fuel to new conspiracy theories. He's he's obviously given this thought. But I come back to the same point time and again. How do you define this? What is hate well, speech to you? What is it to someone else? What is freedom of speech to one person? What is it to, to someone else? Where does this definition take us? Um, and that bill is the nub that's of the problem. up for a long time. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Because, look, it's a private company. They can ban or not ban anybody they want. It's not a First Amendment issue. It is a free speech issue. And the problem is that Twitter, and Facebook has a similar issue, has been inconsistent uh, in how it applies this. There have been, it does seem uh, that there have been more uh, uh, retaliation and shadow banning despite his denial against conservatives. So there's a lot of concern there. It can be a slippery slope. But you have to draw a line somewhere. Otherwise, you're just saying, hey, we're like the phone company. People can say whatever they want. But the problem is this turns off your customers. Uh, some journalists and others have been leaving Twitter because they're tired of the relentlessly toxic atmosphere. So the business model is everybody says what they want, uh, but there is then the sort of moral that, debate that, over don't point. you have some responsibility yeah, yeah, that, That's here. a great point. You can really go in the gutter on some of these websites. There are a lot of trolling out there. Maybe you let the public decide whether or not they want to use your site or go somewhere else. How Ultimately, the marketplace will decide. By the way, this has yeah. been good for Alex Jones in this sense. The InfoWars app, Jones's app, is uh, trending number one on Google Play. It's number three overall on Apple. The publicity is helping him. Well, Howie, more to come. I know you know that. Howard Kurtz in Washington. Thank you, sir. Good to see you, Bill.